Hello and welcome to part five of innate immunology. In this lecture, we will be talking about pattern recognition receptors. These are those sensor systems in the second line of defenses found in the um, innate immune system. So these are actually uh, cellular receptors. There are three different classes and we're gonna talk about each of the three classes. And these receptors are a very important part of the bridge between the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. Uh, the pattern recognition receptors are receptors on cells that will actually recognize and detect a microorganism or a virus. They can detect molecular patterns that are unique to bacterial cells and uh, viral genetic material. There are two different types of um, of molecules or, or uh, I should say uh, patterns that they recognize. The first are called MAMPs, sometimes referred to as PAMPs, and that would be microbe or pathogen associated molecular patterns. These are things like uh, peptidoglycan, flagellin, uh, particular toxins, the LPS or lipopolysaccharide found in the uh, extracellular membrane of the, um, or that outer lipid layer of gram-negative microorganisms. DAMPs are damage-associated molecular patterns, and these are self-receptors or self-patterns that these receptors recognize when there has been cellular damage, usually caused by um, either injury or more often by infection. So here in the bottom right, we have what are called endogenous DAMPs. Uh, these DAMPs are things like um, uh, necrotic cells that are releasing molecules. So these molecules here would be recognized by a cell. Uh, injury, of course, cellular debris and those sorts of things. Uh, signals being sent out by a cell that is actually um, uh, infected by something, an intracellular microorganism or a virus. Uh, and then exogenous dams are anything that's outside of the host cell that's actually entering into it. So again, this could be a, a virus entry or bacteria or intracellular bacteria. MAMPs or PAMPs, microbe associated uh, molecular patterns, include things like, again, peptidoglycan, uh, flagellin, molecules that are unique to bacteria or viruses or uh, uh, extracellular pathogenic organisms, we are already born with receptors that recognize those. So phagocytic cells, uh, sent some sentinel cells, not all receptors are found in all cells and not all cells have all receptors. So we're gonna take a look at these real quick. So the three classes of pattern recognition receptors are toll-like receptors. Uh, toll-like receptors are membrane bound they are always found embedded in a membrane, and they are found um, in, the ex in the cellular membrane itself, or they are embedded in an endosome or phagosome. Nod-like receptors, or NLRs, are found in phagocytic cells and sentinel cells. Sentinel cells would be like a kidney cell or a heart cell, a cell that is non-phagocytic and um, not part of the immune system and kind of stays in one place. So uh, TLRs, we have nod-like receptors. They are found in the cytoplasm. And the others are the rig-like receptors, or RLRs, and the rig-like receptors are also found in phagocytic and sentinel cells, and they are also found within the cytoplasm. All of these are protein receptors that are a key component of the, um, of the innate immune system. So the toll-like receptors. Toll-like receptors, there are 10 known in humans. They are membrane-bound receptors and they are found on the cell surface. So they are, uh, here you can see they are transmembrane or integral proteins that span across the cell membrane of the cell. This is the inside, of course, and you can see the outside. They are found in the, embedded in the membranes of endosomes phagosomes in addition to the actual cell membrane itself. Now, mem the cell membrane bound, right, these uh, TLRs here, TLRs 1 and 2, TLR 6, 4, 5, and uh, here is 11. Uh, this is a proposed TLR over here. If you notice, all of these TLRs on the cell membrane, they all recognize components of bacteria that are found on the outside of the bacterial cells, flagellin. Uh, LPS, peptidoglycan and gram positives, lipotychoic acids, uh, lipoproteins. These are all structures and molecules that are found on the surface of bacterial cells. 
Now, if let's say a gram negative cell binds is present and this phagocytic cell is going to phagocytize it, it will come into contact with that gram negative cell and it will recognize here the TLR4 will recognize the LPS found on the outside of the gram negative bacterial cell. When that LPS binds to this receptor, these receptors are proteins. So when you bind something to a protein, it changes shape. That change in shape of that protein is going to initiate other proteins that are bound to it. Now, I don't, you don't need to know the names of all of these proteins or anything. I just want you to understand the general process here because we are going to come back to this in activation of our adaptive immune response. So as this protein changes shape, this causes initiation or activation of proteins that are also attached here. These proteins then go through a what's called a signaling cascade, a series of proteins that uh, activate each other until eventually one of them is a transcription factor that gets activated in the nucleus of the cell. And that transcription factor is specific to a set of genes in the nucleus of the cell. It causes the cell to begin um, uh, transcription of those, those genes, leads to translation, and of course, cellular product. So some type of response from the cell is going to be initiated because the TLR4 specifically was bound. The same thing will happen with any of the other TLRs over here and the TLRs that are in the endosome. Same thing, anytime a receptor is bound, it's going to initiate that cell signaling pathway. Now, um, toll-like receptors are, are um, membrane bound, again, in the cell membrane and in the endosome and phagosome. In the endosome or phagosome, the TLRs that are bound here recognize, um, they recognize antigens or components, genetic components of bacteria cells and of um, viral cells. So we have single-stranded RNA, which was, would be perhaps from a, bacteria, uh, a bacterial cell. We have unmethylated DNA. This is viral DNA. So if it's a DNA virus, it can be recognized after phagocytosis or double-stranded RNA. And double-stranded RNA is also a form of um, RNA, uh, viral RNA. We don't, we, human cells don't produce, we don't make um, double-stranded RNA in that sense. So this uh, type of RNA, again, would be viral. And so these guys here, these TLRs are recognizing after phagocytosis and the capsid's been broken apart or the bacterial cell has been uh, opened up and lysed open in the phagosome or, or in the endosome, then these TLRs will recognize it and do the exact same thing. They will send a signal to the nucleus, causing this phagocytic cell to begin releasing and producing cytokines. These cytokines are going to be signals to other cells that something is happening. They are sounding the alarm. And the cytokine-induced production that these cells will carry out once they're bound by their antigen is that alarm signal for the adaptive immune response. Now, the other two uh, classes are the nod-like receptors and rig-like receptors. Both of these are internal. They are found in sentinel cells as well as in our phagocytic cells. And when we talk about the phagocytic cells, we're uh, talking about macrophages, dendritic cells. Uh, some TLRs are found in neutrophils, these highly phagocytic cells. But the two that are really super important for the TLRs are the... Um, uh, dendritic cells and the macrophages because that cellular response is going to become important when they move into the lymphatic system to activate the adaptive immune response. Now the nod-like receptors are cytoplasmic, rig-like receptors are also cytoplasmic. There are approximately 23 different NLRs. Um, uh, so I'm not sure how many RLRs there are. Nod-like receptors are focused primarily on intracellular bacteria infections. So if we look over here at the NLRs, they uh, will recognize bacterial secretion. They recognize, here we have an NLR for flagellin. Here's another one that might uh, recognize cellular damage caused by um, intracellular bacteria, and bacteria infections. In antigen presenting cells, they trigger a very specific response and this is called the creation of an inflammasome. And the inflammasome is a inflammation initiation complex. So they initiate an inflammation. 
Rig-like receptors are also cytoplasmic proteins, but instead of recognizing intracellular obligate bacteria, they recognize the viruses. So again, they start seeing uh, uncapped single-stranded RNA. Uh, remember, eukaryotic RNA, our own RNA has what's called a five prime cap. If the five prime cap is missing, then a rig-like receptor will recognize it as viral RNA recognizes double-stranded RNA, another form of uh, viral RNA as well. Uh, we do see RLRs in almost all cells. It is the early warning system for a viral infection, and they are responsible for um, uh, initiating production of what are called AVPs, or antiviral proteins, as well as the interferon response, and they also cause cells to produce interferons. Now, in AVPs, antiviral proteins, these are small little proteins that the cell itself will also produce, but it sends out a signal, and it sends out um, a chemical signal to neighboring cells in, uh, in autocrine signaling or in uh, paracrine signaling. And these uh, will tell neighboring cells, right? So I have some neighboring cells over here. It warns neighboring cells that there's a virus on the loose so that neighboring cells begin producing their own set of AVPs. These antiviral proteins will help prevent entry of that virus. So that virus can't get in now and cause all kinds of problems, right? So here's our little virus with the spikes. And if this virus were to try to get in and try to begin an infection stage, these AVPs here may be able to prevent that. So it not only um, per tries to save itself, which it may be too late if there's a viral infection, but it also tries to warn neighboring cells and say, hey, hey guys, there's a virus out here. Uh, you need to prepare for that. Cells of the immune system, such as macrophages and dendritic cells, are the first line of defense in recognizing pathogens of various kinds. These cells have developed several kinds of receptors for recognizing different kinds of pathogen-associated molecular patterns, known as PAMPs. There are different classes of these proteins that recognize different types of PAMPs. Toll-like receptors, or TLRs, are composed of multiple leucine-rich repeats that are useful for recognizing various PAMPs. TLRs are membrane-associated proteins. Some are located on the surface of the cell, while others are located on endocytic vesicles, where they survey the degraded contents of pathogens taken up by endocytosis. Each member of the TLR family recognizes different kinds of PAMPs. For example, TLR5 recognizes flagellin, which is a highly conserved constituent of the bacterial flagellum. Bacterial genomes contain methylated CPG oligonucleotide motifs, which are recognized by TLR9 once the genome has been degraded in the lysosome. TLR6 and TLR2 are a dimer that recognize diacyl lipopeptides. TLR1 and TLR2 are a dimer that recognize triacyl lipopeptides, and TLR4 recognizes lipopolysaccharide, LPS, a component of gram-negative bacteria. Like TLR9, TLR3 and TLR7 are located on endocytic vesicles and recognize double-stranded RNA and single-stranded RNA, respectively. When any TLR is activated, it sends a signal to the nucleus by activating transcription factors. Not all pathogens, however, live in the extracellular space or are phagocytosed. Some pathogens, such as viruses, exist and replicate in the cytosol. There are at least two classes of receptors that can detect pathogens in the cytosol and signal their presence to the immune system. One class of such receptors are members of the nucleotide oligomerization domain family, or NOD proteins. For example, the NOD2 protein, which is located in the cytosol, can detect bacterial proteoglycans of intracellular bacteria. When the NOD2 protein recognizes its ligand, the muramyl dipeptide, it sends a signal to the nucleus to activate transcription. Finally, there is a class of intracellular receptor proteins that contain an RNA helicase domain and two caspase recruitment domains, or CARD domains. One member of this family, Rig I, recognizes double-stranded RNAs that are a component in the life cycle of many RNA viruses. 
This class of proteins also sends a signal to the nucleus. But unlike TLRs and NODs, it activates the production of type 1 interferons. In all, the toll-like receptors, NOD proteins, and the RNA helicase card domain family provide the innate immune system with the ability to detect both extracellular and intracellular pathogens and to activate an immune response against them. So over here on the right, we have just kind of, this is from your textbook, and it's really just showing initiation of that interferon response and how this works. So here we have a virus-infected cell, and this is an RNA virus. It has single-stranded RNA, and when that RNA, let me get my pen back here, when that RNA begins to, when that RNA begins to uh, replicate, it becomes double-stranded RNA. That is part of the life cycle of the virus itself. That double-stranded RNA is going to activate a set of genes responsible for interferon production. These cells then release interferon into the um, uh, interstitial fluid, into that extracellular matrix, and that interfer interferon begins diffusing to the neighboring cells. A neighboring cell will receive this interferon and begin producing those um, AVPs. Now, because there is no current viral infection, those um, antiviral proteins that are being produced by that cell are inactivated. So in this state, they're called an IAVP. Later, once this cell, since this cell over here is infected, um, we know from the viral replication cycle that these viruses are eventually going to be released out of the cell. When they get released out of the cell and the virus tries to enter into a new cell to cause infection, we see these um, inactivated antiviral proteins become activated and this will actually induce apoptosis of the cell. So it's not that it's going to come uh, necessarily allow for survival of the cell, but it's going to induce apoptosis. And with apoptosis, if this cell dies, my pen is not working for some reason here, but if, my, if, um, if the uh, uh, cell dies and is no longer functional, it can no longer serve as a virus factory. So the cell dies prior to viral replication, and this helps to reduce the viral load in the actual cells themselves. So just for a quick review on pattern recognition receptors, you want to know the difference between the uh, damage-associated molecular patterns and the um, uh, pathogen. Uh, I learned them as PAMPs. They have since uh, changed it to MA MAMPs, uh, so um, microbe or pathogen-associated molecular patterns. You want to know the three classes of receptors, where they are found, what types of cells they are in, the types of things that they recognize be able to compare and contrast TLRs, NLRs, and RLRs. And then these other questions look at their role in innate immunity and how they act as a bridge between innate and adaptive immunity. So these are some really important review questions. Make sure that you go through each of them individually. You want to make sure that uh, you understand what's being asked because these are uh, uh, important questions on the exam. Hope you enjoyed the lecture, and I'll see you guys in part six.